Hey guys, beautiful day out there today. And I'm actually really excited because I've only gone and managed to get my hands on a Starlink satellite to set up here and try it in the UK. So stay tuned and I'll be sharing my experience of our setup and first attempts at using Starlink here in the UK. <laughs> Welcome back and let's have a real quick unboxing of this rather large box. Uh, to share my experience, well, we ordered it probably about seven days ago. It was shipped out the day after from California or San Francisco, one or the other. Uh, it's been in the air for a couple of days. It got to Belgium, spent a day in Belgium, went to Germany, spent a day in Germany, uh, went to Birmingham, spent a day in Birmingham, got down to Bristol and was delivered about seven days later. Uh, actually, once it made it to Europe, it was only in Europe uh, holding for about two days. So, really quite pleased with the delivery. Um, let's see what's in the box. Right, so quite a large box, really. We'll have to get in here and put it on the tape. We've got around there, three around this side. And let's open it up. Oh! Ah, very interesting. So we've got a piece of, is that the instructions? What is it? Number one, don't touch the dish, poke it outside with the satellite up there. And um, that's you outside in the picture. Then you go inside and you do something with that thing. And then number three, you connect to it. Apparently it's that simple. Rather large plastic molded bit. And inside is the business. So what we've got here, we've got some sort of tripod. It's made out of metal. It has got some screw holes in it, which isn't going to be useful for our roof because our roof's tiled. Um, I'm going to sit it, or I'm going to try sitting it at about a 40 degree angle on the tiled roof. I'm not sure how well that will work, but we'll find out in a bit. The next thing we're welcomed by is uh, not the dish, the dish will come out next. A rather long cable. It looks like the long cable goes to the dish. I'm going to unplug that for now. So, we've got one over there. We've got a power lead. English, British, good, nice. Um, power supply box is metal. It says it takes um, 2.5 amps at 240 volts. That's quite a lot, really. Uh, I mustn't pull that all the time. It says here the total maximum is 180 watts. So that's quite a lot of power, 180 watts, really, about as much as an electric blanket or something like that. Then what do we have on the end of this white cable? This looks like the Wi-Fi access point. So this is going to be a router. And... Although actually the router and the, the satellite plugs into the power supply so the data comes up to here and then to there. And then finally uh, another piece of plastic. Pull that out. A dish. Let's see how heavy this is. Oh, it's, it's fairly heavy. Uh, a few, good few kilograms. What have we got here? Does that have a coating on it? No, don't think you peel that off. That is its surface. That's the dish. Oh, it's fairly weighty. Um, you might need a hand moving that about. A good length of cable. And then it literally looks like this stalk plugs straight into the tripod there. Now, I'm a little bit worried that if I balance this on my roof at 40, you know, it's nearly 30 or 40 degree angle. As this thing pivots around, is it going to fall over on its face, slide off the roof and fall to the floor? That would not be good. So I'm not really sure how to deal with that. Maybe what I'll do for now is tie a piece of string around the bottom of this tripod and then tie that string to the window frame. So if it does decide to slide down the roof, it's anchored. Um, probably wouldn't want to lose um, our deposit on this equipment straight away. In case you're wondering, the deposit on the equipment was about five or 600 pounds, including delivery to the UK. Um, I think if we have trouble getting service, we get a, get the deposit back, we can send the gear back. Uh, if we decide to keep this for more than three months, we'll then lose that deposit and the equipment will become ours to keep. 
and I think the going rate was about £80 a month subscription fee, which sounds a lot, but considering our BT Fibre is about 45 quid a month plus £20 uh, line rental, actually working out that kind of price uh, for, for the internet. And one of the problems we've got with BT internet, and we've asked them so many times to fix it, is drop connections. We can have as many as, you know, 30 to 40 drop connections in a 24 hour period. Some go on for a few seconds, some go on for minutes. Uh, sometimes we'll lose connections as Zooms or videos uh, and we'll have to, you know, reboot the, the router. So I'm hoping this may be more reliable than that. Oh, better be at the size and weight of this thing anyway. Right, so let's put the dish down somewhere else and just check what else is in this box. So we have got some regulatory notices. Um, yeah, I don't know about wanting to read that. It has got like a picture of an angle here. Maybe that's got something to do that's important. Um, it's all different languages, so only one of those is in English. Pass that to Kaylee, she can read it and let me know. Read that, Kaylee. And what else is in here? Just lots of plastic. It would be nice if that was pressed cardboard uh, rather than uh, plastic. It's going to be very difficult to get that recycled. The local recycling place might not take it. If it was pressed card, they would. Um, other than that, the cardboard box is easily recyclable. So another thing to note is that during the sign-up process, there was no signal or service coverage check. You simply enter a postcode in and it was probably likely that this was used to check the coverage but after putting the postcode in and being agreed for the beta testing it was just agreed to send um, with no checking of signal or whether you're going to pick up the internet. But what was advised is that you use the app, the Starlink app, and I believe you can download it without being a customer and use this Starlink app based with your postcode to try and figure out where you need your dish to be pointed. So that was really my biggest concern, is not getting adequate line of sight with the sky. Now, if you're using the app, I'm able to easily see the allocated area of the sky that my dish needs to see. You simply move your phone camera around to see the area of sky that's allocated to you. Thankfully, this is much smaller than I thought it would be, and I should have two or three locations that give me the required space. You may have noticed the term allocated there, and this is something I've been asked about. Can you take your dish to other locations or fit it to a mobile home, for example? According to SpaceX user agreement, it's a big no. This is apparently due to the individual dish being programmed to communicate with a particular set of dishes that are over your house. They may be moving, but you're only permitted to communicate in that zone. Therefore, if you move from this window in the sky, your dish may not be able to connect with the SpaceX network. Well, that's what it says anyway. Apparently there might be a more mobile version later to come. With that being said, I may well try a couple of cheeky link-ups from the mobile home in the coming months. Right, now we've used the app, I think I've found two or three potential locations for this dish. I'm going to start with the easiest location first and see how things go from there. Then we might look at a more permanent solution such as fixing the thing to the roof or possibly mounting it to the wall. So after using the app, I can see this is a good potential site. Uh, if I open this window here, we gain access to this area of roof. Quite windy out. And this area of roof has a good view of this sky, and it just so happens, according to the app, that is a patch of sky that I need to be able to see. It does also suggest that it wants to be able to see almost directly up, and the edge of the roof does cover that, but we're going to see whether that works. Now, I am a bit worried. Uh, this is a tiled roof and it does have an angle of about 30 degrees on it. I'm a bit worried that if I put the tripod on here, it could slide down and possibly fall. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna tie some rope around the bracket and tie it to the window frame for now, just for testing so that we don't end up losing the dish in the first 10 minutes of use. First of all, I'm gonna try and put the dish on the tripod. Makes sense. It looks fairly easy, I would think. It's got some kind of squeeze catches on it here and they must kind of slot into the stand. Let's see where it goes in. Yep, that's it, perfect, locked into place. It's a bit of wobble on that. 
Um, people have said any mo any movement on the dish will cause you to lose a connection, and I feel like that's quite a bit of movement on there. Next thing I've got to try and do is actually get it out through that little window, which now looking at it, I don't think it's going to go. We'll find out. Hmm. Let's see. This may well be a video on someone dropping a SpaceX satellite out their window. Because it is quite heavy. Okay, there we go, it's out. Uh, it did feel a bit top heavy. Okay, so as you can see, it is positioned on the roof. Um, it's just kind of sat there at the moment. I feel like it's a little bit precarious, it could topple over, but for the moment, I've just kind of used the data cable to hold it in place before I uh, engineer a better solution. So, yeah, let's see what happens. We're gonna turn it on next. Okay, so the next stage is to put your router somewhere or your wireless access point and take your power lead and I don't, I'm not going to plug it in right now because I still need to plug in the dish. So let's actually plug the dish in first. The dish comes with a very long cable, I don't know exactly how long but probably getting on for what do you reckon, 10-15 metres at least. Uh, should be enough to get you out into the garden or up onto the roof. Gonna plug the dish into the aux socket. Is that where it came out? No, it didn't. No, it didn't come out there. I'm plugging it in the wrong place already. The dish plugs into the power supply. There we go. And now I'm gonna plug the power supply in and hope that it doesn't do something bad. Ready? It's plugged in. It's plugged in. What's happening? Nothing. So I've got white lights. I've got some white lights on the, oh, I've got a white light on the router. The router definitely doesn't stand that way. It must definitely stand that way, which seems really precarious. It doesn't want to stand up because that thick cable. And now what we need to, oh my goodness, the dish is moving. The dish is moving, Kaylee, do you see it? Okay, so, we plugged it in and within a few moments the dish started to move. See it moving about on its own? And now what's it doing? How do we know when we've got a connection? Oh, this is why I should have read the instructions. Haven't you read the instructions yet? <laughs> oh. It's pointing at us now, that's not where you want to be looking. There's no internet up there. So I do believe from other things I've watched and read, it says it can take about 15 minutes to initially find a signal. So I'm now going to just give it five or 10 minutes and see what happens. Uh, I'm sure you don't want to see that, you've probably seen plenty of stuff like that. Okay, so what's happened at this stage is we've tried to connect to this using the phone on the wireless. The first time I logged into it, it says to enter the Wi-Fi name and password, and I thought that was some information on the bottom of this box. Turns out it's not. You enter in the name you want to give this and the password you want to give this. So I've set that up. Now it's visible in my link. I've just called it Starlink Mega. Uh, click on that. Now I can enter the password that I've just set to it. Click Connect. and we are now connecting to the Starlink. It tells me the internet is not available at the moment. So that's to be expected. Dish is... Can't tell whether the dish is moving or not now. It might be moving a very small amount. And yeah, we're, 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 we're connected with no internet at the moment. So let's uh, have a cup of tea, come back to it in a bit. Uh, a bit of tea and crumpets and we should be good to go.
Right, eh? I've had the dish on the roof for a couple of hours now, and it's actually pointing in towards the house, so it really wants to be on the other side of the house, I think. Um, it picks up signal now and again. I've had speeds of up to 150, 160 megabits down, but um, yeah, it doesn't want to stay connected for much more than about 10 minutes, so probably going to bring it in and try and reposition it out in the back garden. Okay, we've actually moved the dish into the back garden now and we're getting a more reliable connection as in it's not dropping out so often but it does seem to be a lot slower so let's do a couple of speed tests and see how we go. Um, I find if it's not been used for a while it, it takes a little while to kind of warm up so once you kind of start a connection it may be a bit slower and may speed up. So at the moment we're pressing to 25 download and about 18 to 24 20 something upload that's a bit slower than before i just run this test a moment ago and i was getting a 60 down which is a lot faster than i'm usually getting so this gives you a kind of idea the kind of speeds you might be expecting now as i say when the dish was around the front of the house we were actually getting 150 i'd even seen 170 megabit download speed and about 50 upload speed uh, we're not getting anywhere near that speed now, but as I say, the connection is more stable. As you'll see from this photo, we've actually put the dish on some decking. Uh, it's got fairly good field of view, but strangely enough, it's pointing in the, in the opposite direction of what the Starlink app suggested it would point. So we're actually now pointing uh, north rather than south, um, which is a bit strange. But what we'll do is we'll do a few more tests over the next couple of weeks, um, share, you know, put together our experience. So make sure you stay tuned. Click subscribe if you want to know more about this particular uh, setup and this project that we've got going here. Uh, otherwise, take care and see you next time.